Hello, dear friends. This is Yule Humphreys. I'm glad to be with you again to share a word with you uh, from my desk here in my home. And I'm happy to share this word because it's the word of God that I'm giving to you. <clears throat> I want to speak to you on a scripture found over in the book of Joshua in the Old Testament concerning the life of Joshua and the Israelites when they went <clears throat> into the promised land and they came to the city of Jericho. And Jericho uh, had uh, armed people behind those walls that were enemies to Israel. And they didn't know how they were going to take that city. They had high walls, thick walls, so thick on top that uh, they say that a chariot and a horse could drive across uh, the top of those walls. And uh, it was almost impossible to get through those walls or over them. They were such a protection to the city. And so God told Joshua to take the priest so many priests, and they were to take the ark which contained the Ten Commandments, and they were to, all these priests, were seven priests, were to walk around the walls of Jericho with trumpets. And they would walk around one day, and then the next day they would do it again a second day, and the next day they walk around again the next day, and the people there in Jericho were looking at them, wondering, who in the world, what are they doing? And they saw them carrying this ark around which represented the presence of God in their lives. And they walked around seven times. And the Lord said to Joshua, On the seventh time, on the seventh day, after they walk around the walls, they're to do it seven times around that wall. Seven times on the seventh day. And then they're to stop. And they take the trumpets and blow with their trumpets and then shout with a loud shout. And he said, When you do that, the walls will come down. The walls will come down. And this is what happened. This priest went out there and they went around the walls. And on the seventh day, they went around seven times. And then on the seventh day, they blew with the trumpets and shouted. And the Bible says the walls fell down flat. And the Israelites went in with their army and destroyed the city of Jericho. And this was a great miracle. They used to sing the old spiritual. Oh, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. The Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. <laughs> and that's what happened. And the walls came tumbling down. Well, I want to take it on a spiritual note from that word and say to you that our Christians in this land today, there are some walls in America that needs to come down. Walls that need to come down. Walls of unbelief. Walls of disregarding the Bible. Walls regarding the truth of the Bible that are being disregarded. For instance, uh, there is a wall, there is a law of abortion in our land that makes it legal for people to uh, have abortions, for women to abortion, their, uh, to kill their babies, and that's what's happening. It, 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 the way you put it, it, it it's, ki it's killing, and the Bible says you shall not kill. That's life. That's life in that womb, and it should not be taken. And uh, the book of Jeremiah, in the first chapter, Jeremiah's prophet said, Before the word of the Lord came to me and said, Jeremiah, before you were born, while you were still in your mother's womb, I called you to be my prophet and to speak to my people. And so you see, if that mother had aborted Jeremiah, she would have been aborting and killing one of God's great prophets. And so we need to see the wall comes down. Homosexuality is a wall that needs to come down. The Bible says that homosexuality is a sin against God and that God has given them up because of their sin of lust one another, a woman with a woman and a man with a man. Now, God has said it is wrong. And therefore, he hates that sin of homosexuality. Now, he loves the homosexual. And he and I love the homosexual. But we don't love homosexuality. God loves the murderer, but he don't love murder. God loves the drunkard, but he don't love drunkenness. And so we need to change. We need to see a change that's needed. And the person that is uh, uh, pro-abortion can change their mind. And God can help you change your mind. And uh, the, uh, the homosexual can change his life. God can deliver him from or her from that 
from their sexuality and bring them into the place where God wants them. God loves them, and I love them. And we love uh, those that are out there that are needing help, and these walls need to come down. We need to pray for God's love and mercy to bring down these walls. Oh, we need to see the importance. There's a wall. There's a wall of, of uh, dismay, a wall of doubt and dismay. Over in the book of uh, Mark, the 14th chapter, we read a, a word concerning Jesus at the Last Supper. And we need to see that instead of doubts and dismay and complaining, we need to be looking at the things God is doing for us, good things, blessed things that come to us. And we need to thank God, even for our troubles. We need to thank God. And we can only do this by the power of the Spirit of God that's in us. So trust Him, dear friend, and you can thank God for your troubles and trials. Thank God for things that are going wrong in your life. Thank God. Love your enemies. Pray for those that stand against you. And oh, seek the will of God. Jesus has said at the Last Supper, He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Here Jesus at the Last Supper knew He was going. In the morning He knew He was going to the cross to suffer, to suffer, and to be humiliated, and to die for people that are sinners like you and me. And we've been born again because of it. He took that cup and gave thanks. He said, Thank you, dear God for allowing me to drink this cup, for allowing me to die so others can live. And so with that kind of love, we can conquer and we will conquer. There's another wall that needs to come down, and that's the wall of pride, pride and prejudice. Pride is the mother sin of all sins. Proverbs 16, and the verse in, in, in 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. If you're walking around in pride, thinking you're better than everybody else, then you're going to head for destruction. If you're walking in pride, in a haughty spirit, looking down on others, you are heading for a fall. My friend, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. And so we need to see that. I like the story told about a young man that was working for this man that had a big, big farm, hundreds of acres. And uh, he got mad at the man. The man, he thought, mistreated him, and oh, he got to holding this grudge against him. So one night, he said, I'll fix him. And he, and then, in fact, the man told him he, he was... Uh, replacing him, and he, he was going to hire someone else, and it made the young man so mad. He went out that night and planted Johnson grass all over 40, 50 acres of his land. Johnson grass, it grows up, you know, and it's good for nothing. It's just uh, a problem. And he planted that, and he said, that'll take care of him. But later on, he met the, the, the owner's daughter and began to go with her, and they fell in love, and he asked the father for his... For her hand he gave it to her, and he married the young lady. And the father said to him, Young man, I'm going to do something for you and my daughter. I'm going to give you some land. I want you to have those lower 40 acres. They're yours. <laughs> and that was the acres where he had planted all the Johnson grass. <laughs> and so, he, as the story goes, he spent the next two or three years getting rid of Johnson grass. Oh, my dear friends, there is a way that we're going to reap what we sow. So be careful what you sow. Never sow anything with an angry temper. Never sow anything with hatred toward another. Let God be your strength. There's a wall. There's a wall that needs to come down. How can we bring these down? We bring down the walls by love. By love. Over in John, the 16th and the fifth, uh, 16th chapter of John, we read uh, these words. Uh, 15th chapter, I'm sorry. These things Jesus said, I've spoken to you, that my joy might may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. This is my commandment, love one another as I've loved you. And we need to love. By the power of God, we need to love. By the grace of God, we need to love. I can say to you, whoever you are, 
whatever you're doing, whatever kind of life you're living, whatever your lifestyle, I want you to know I love you and God loves you.